we started it. But they were the ones who made it great. Mm. This is where the institution began, the, the rental, the signing the agreement for the building of Manila Med and the blessing of Manila Med. She did not put up EAC, nor Medical Center Manila. She was invited to join Medical Center Manila Muna. Unang unang muna, the first group of the young doctors. Yun muna ang unang una. Who grouped together to put up a dreaming pala, to put up a, a hospital. Walang leader. So they talk, they approach their professor, Dr. Campos, to be with them and to lead them. And he accepted. So, siya na ngayon ang naging leader. Okay, so meron na sila ngayong leader, meron na sila na, oh, so where's the money? In the group was our family doctor, Saturnino Ador Dionisio. Dr. Saturnino Ador Dionisio. Meron akong kilala, sabi niya, my patient, the family is my pasyente. They own a pharmacy, a very famous pharmacy at that time. In approach, without batting an eyelash, my mother said, yes, I will join you. My mother organized her group naman. Yung group naman was mga pinsang kong doktor, my cousins, mga uncles, mga ganyan, who are also in the medical profession. So, ginurup niya yon, and siyang leader naman. So, it became Leader si Dr. Campos and leader si Mrs. Dolor here. Naganyan na sila. And they opened Medical Center Manila. Ang na nakasyak sa mother ko, basket yung, yung mga language ni Dr. Campos, yung lagi nagagalit. But she was so patient and she was pasok dito, labas dito. Yun na nga, nung pinagbili na yung Marian, so tawag agad si Dr. Campos sa mother ko, alam niyo, ibinag, ah, ano yung Marian? Ang sagot ng mother ko, buy it. They were talking that time over the phone na yun ay school. Pero wala pang pangalan. Marian muna yun. Nung mayari na, nung natapos na ang deal, ano na, Emilio Aguinaldo College, magkakamera ng branch in Cavite. This is when they, they decided to have a, a school for the hospital. And then in 1960, Eight or 69, they uh, acquired, well, UPSI, which is the mother company of Medical Center Manila and of Emilio Aguinaldo College, acquired Marion Hospital and uh, Marion College, which was just next to Manila Med. She came from humble beginnings. She was ambitious. She had a lot of dreams and aspirations. But despite of what her family was, she fulfilled her dreams. So when she met uh, Dr. Campos, this is where all this started, from Manila Med to Emilio Aguinaldo College, and together also with um, the hotel, uh, Pearl Manila Hotel, and other businesses. I guess there are two minds put together, Dr. Campos and um, my grandmother. Uh, this is how the whole Oopsie group of companies was born or was established. These are the different uh, mementos sent by our partner schools. This is a partner school in Indonesia. This is from Nepal, Maldives, schools in India. These are partner consultancies in China. This is uh, 
one of the first buildings here in the Manila campus, building five and six. This is what is now the De La Salle University Medical Center. That's its uh, construction. Importante sa ama namin na maparangalan si Emilio Aguinaldo at ginawa yan sa pamamagitan ng pagpapangalan dito sa paaralan ng Emilio Aguinaldo College. So ang naging hamon ng pamahalaan noon eh, kayo ba pwede magtayo ng paaralan dito sa Dasmariñas? At kung magtatayo kayo ng paaralan, hindi namin kukunin lahat niyang property ng sugarcane field niyo pero kailangan magtayo kayo ng school. So, yan ang nagsimula na tinayo yung unang Emilio Aguinaldo College dito. The De La Salle University uh, Medical Center and uh, Health Sciences Campus and the De La Salle University Campus here in Cavite. Mm -hmm. That started as Emilio Aguinaldo College. Ma mapapansin nyo that this part of uh, the land has these five or six big mango trees. You can see this, this grove of mango trees from the highway and it really attracts your atten attention. So, konti konti, dini up ni Gaito. And one of their priorities, and because both of them, especially my mother, was a plant lover. My, my mom loved plants. Uh, and my dad also. So, pinagtsagaan nila magtanim ng sari-sari mga puno. So, na, now you see it, it's very, very, it's almost like a forest here, no? Tanim nila lahat yan. Ang origin na lang dito yung mga magagaking manggang yan. This was very important to my father because he was one of the founders of Cavite Historical Society. And um, they feel that uh, Emilio Aguinaldo is one of the heroes of the Philippines that have, has not been given due recognition. Um, just the mere fact that he established the first republic in Asia it must have taken a lot of courage for Aguinaldo to summon the forces here in Cavite and to declare independence here. This is the first building in Cavite and uh, that is after the school transferred to La Salle and this was really began as a dormitory. Well, this is really the f first uh, school in Cavite. This is the uh, Emilio, what is now the De La Salle University das Marinas, part of that campus. As I, you know, browse through this book, I recall that my father was actually had his weight right here on this uh, theater, and um, so it is uh, almost uh, fitting that we begin this uh, conversation here. He was always uh, in the background, sometimes even in the foreground. You know, as the founder, he, his character is maybe one of a revolutionary type. Uh, he has ideas and he has to bring them into fruition and reality. Maybe he would listen to suggestions, but at the end of the day, he decided everything. And uh, that was the first challenge of running this organization. And my part was to develop what he had founded and what he left into an educational institution that would make significant contributions to this country and to the Philippines and maybe even to the world. That evolution really moved from a centrally run uh, organization. We have become more participative in the community of educational institutions. And all of these uh, efforts are directed towards how can we provide the Filipino learner the best education they can have. Excellence.
these are, well, things that have been part of the EAC boardroom um, that, uh, well, that is, uh, my father was fond of uh, all these carvings and uh, this in particular, of course, you all know is a symbol of uh, triumph of medicine over, um, you know, death or illness. From four programs, this school now has over 18 programs. It has also evolved from uh, to a school now with a combined enrollment of over 18,000 students and a more international institution too. Uh, we have many students from different parts of the world. They are enrolled in different areas of the school, some in the health sciences, but there are many also in the graduate programs. More diverse uh, student body, and I think the richer experience for both local and our international students is good for everyone. It is important in the education of all our students to get a sense of the community of nations. You know, in our motto or our aspirations for ourselves and our students, you know, we, we sum it up in our, in three words, virtue. We always search and it's an, an attempt to be a better person and we understand the idea of a better person evolves. Excellence, competition is quite important in driving everyone to be their best, to realize their best potentials. And the final um, aspiration we have for ourselves and our students is to be of service to the communities where we belong. And so this aspirations are what guide the institution, what guide the students, and what guides uh, the faculty and the staff. Well, this is uh, Dr. Campos, uh, Paolo Campos, our father. As a young physician, he was a, a new resident, and uh, maybe because he topped the board exam, he was assigned to Malacanang to serve President Elpidio Quirino. This is uh, former President Ferdinand Marcos uh, giving a recognition to Dr. Campos for his work in the community health uh, program. By definition, virtue is the moral character of the person. I think in the context of the school operations of Emilio Aguinaldo College, Virtue is doing the right thing. Continuously doing the right thing for the right reason. Of course, for the sake of our students, of our parents, of our employees, and the rest of the stakeholder of Emilio Aguinaldo College. We have gone this far. 50th founding anniversary. Here we are, very successful. The quality of education that we offer to our stakeholders is sustained, not only in terms of the awards that we have received from CHED and from PACOA. Our graduates are not only known here in the Philippines, but also in other parts of the world. That's why I believe we were able to uphold the graduate attribute of ethical and committed leaders. Looking at the core values of the institution, which is virtue, excellence, and service, I would say that service is the outcome of the two other core values, which is virtue and excellence. Even if a person has a virtue, 
even if a person excels in everything that he or she does, if that person is not willing to give service, then it will not translate to the society. The core values of the institution is all about an equation. It's a mathematical equation, if I may. It's virtue plus excellence is equal to service. And I would say that the hardest times to show service to our stakeholders is during the pandemic. And I always tell my team in EAC Cavite that the pandemic was a test of our resilience. It's a test of how good we are in delivering the academic programs. Service. So, nung time na yun, yung EAC talaga, uh, hindi namin ganun ka kilala pa. Kaya lang, uh, my father told me na, oh Jeff, dito ka mag-aral sa EAC. So, we decided to apply for academic scholarship in EAC. So, nung mga panahon na yun, talagang sabi ko, ang laki ng tulong ng Emilio Aguinaldo College sa akin. Ang tanging baon ko lang po ay lakas ng loob at yung pinagkaloob po sa atin ay just na konting karunungan para mag-aral na mabuti. The EAC wanted me to have a better life. Si President naman, tuwan-tuwa yan, kahit hindi yan masyadong nagsasalita, nakikita mo naman yan sa mga mata eh. Sabi niya, o oh, sige, dahil uh, nakapasa ka na, ikaw na ang mag-head uh, ng legal department natin. <laughs> Yun yung offer naman sa akin. There is always an invisible string attached between EAC and myself. I always go back to EAC. EAC as a school was a cross between a dormitory, a factory, and a warehouse. But now, it's a different matter. It really looks like a good school. With the facades, with the new buildings, the facilities are good. So, it was a remarkable change, and the change happened very fast. It was very fast indeed. The Kingmaker, lo and behold, started it all. We went into accreditation, we went into strategic planning, we went into all the facets of management and strategic plans as far as um, EAC Cavite is concerned. From 362 students to 12,000 students. And I think this is a um, very good indication that EAC still has a long way to go. AAC was responsive to the need of the industry partners in the country and abroad that rely to the presence of more technically skilled human resources capable of understanding using state-of-the-art technologies especially in allied health and in medicine to account um, i am almost Three decades here and two years, I am greatly honored to be a part of this 50th year celebration para sa mga namumuno ng administrasyon ng Emilio Aguinaldo College. Maraming maraming salamat po. Wala pa akong trabaho na sinukuan ko. I, I really make sure that whenever I apply, I accept the responsibility, I will deliver to the best of my ability. We work together with Dr. Paolo Campos and the rest of the other deans here. Sometimes, pabalik ka pa lang ng school, maririnig mo na yung buong institusyon meron ditong ampli. 
and sasabihin, Feijing, Dini Banyas, please proceed to Terrace. Palabas ka pa lang doon, pabalik ka pa lang sa Emilio Aguinaldo College, hindi ka pa nakakarating dahil yung compound niya, meron din doon ampli. So in short, in a day, at least five to six times kang babalik doon. If Lolo, yan, Dr. Paolo, uh, calls us, kahit pa naka-heels kami niyan, we really have to walk from this place going to Pasong Lawin. No? To take all of uh, mga bilin niya. We really have to have with us a record book to jot down all of those things that he wants us to accomplish for a day. And I am very happy that with all of these things that uh, 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 EAC has now, uh, these are the fruits of our labor during that time. Many people look at Lolo as a stern, hard-hearted man. But I personally believe that Lolo has a heart, a soft heart for people, despite his stern and strong facade that people can see. An example, one time a clerk committed some blunder and right there and then he said, you're fired. And really, the clerk was out. But then, one Sunday, it happened that the clerk comes from Dasmariñas. One Sunday, Lolo saw her in church. And he called for her and said, Oh, saan ka na ba? Anong trabaho mo? And the lady said, Wala ho, sir. Bueno, his favorite expression, bueno, bukas pumunta ka sa opisina ko. And lo and behold, that girl was reinstated with no questions. Every uh, graduation exercises, I would rehearse the students, the graduation uh, program. And the last word that I would always tell the graduating class is this, graduates, love your school. Let's uh, go here and let's see. Okay, well then we have the, the first president of the school, Dr. Paulo Campos in his uh, um, attire as a national scientist. Second president, Dr. Amado Campos, who became uh, subsequently the president of Central Luzon State University. Uh, this is... Uh, Dr. Flor Angel Campos, she retired from the UP School of Home Economics and briefly served in the school. And uh, the fourth president, uh, Dr. Cicero Campos, who left the school and became the first president of the uh, Public Safety College in Silang. Uh, President Ramos uh, asked him to head that institution. I think this photo captures the essence of a school. You see, this is in the PICC, April 19, 2011, 14 years after I was to the day I was uh, installed as president. And you see the students and their parents. Uh, it's uh, commencement day and uh, a new chapter in the lives of the students and another chapter in the life of the school. And I think this is perhaps what will stay with me as a memory of the school.